What we're going to do now, if I could ask all of the athletes please to come up to the front of the room. What we're going to do now is I'm going to introduce each of them, one at a time obviously, and as I introduce each of them, they're going to explain to you what they have done to go from ordinary to extraordinary. So uh, my association, as I mentioned in my original presentation, has been for 25 years with the VIS, and I've been extremely lucky to be around elite athletes uh, pretty much most of my life. I started as an elite swimmer at the age of seven, well, quite, not quite elite back then, but obviously starting the journey there. Uh, and whilst I never got to go to the Olympics, Paralympics, or represent a national team, uh, everyone on this stage has, and they know what it's like to put the work in to actually get to the world, uh, the top of the world. So. Um, in keeping with our theme, the first person, and what I'm going to do here, I'll turn this on and I've got to be careful with sound. So that one's on. So Millie, okay, I'm going to introduce you first and then they're going to play past the microphone around. So that's probably the best way we can manage this. But uh, Millie Tapper, uh, is table tennis is her sport. And she was the first Australian woman to compete at both the Rio Olympics and Rio Paralympics in table tennis. Uh, she's a bronze medalist from the 2014 Beijing Paralympic Games, and she's currently completing her degree in exercise and sports science at and, and a diploma in conveyancing at RMIT. So, Millie, what, do you, what advice would you give people, or what is your secret from going from ordinary to extraordinary? Yeah, I think for me it would have been the resilience to failure. Um, I failed time and time again, and that sometimes scared me as well. But in the end, I decided that I would just do all the work I could in absolutely every area to the absolute best of my ability. And then I think by doing that, I ended up um, almost overachieving. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, by putting in that little bit of extra work, I, if I fell short, it was still better than I could have expected. And how did you feel about being able to go to both Olympic Games last year? Yeah, uh, I feel, uh, I guess, probably really privileged, obviously, being a Paralympic athlete to then, um, you know, show up. The able-bodied athletes was quite um, exciting. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it all required so much hard work and a lot of discipline, a lot of dedication, a lot of um, help from family and friends. But to be able to go over twice, it was a little bit of deja vu, but I had a, f a fantastic time and uh, it was all the hard work was definitely worth it. Lovely. Thank you very much, Millie. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> so our next is Annabelle Smith. So if we play past the microphone, thank you. Uh, Annabelle's sport is diving. Uh, she is a dual Olympian and Rio Olympic bronze medalist in the three meter synchronized springboard bronze medalist in the 2010 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, and she's currently completing an exercise science degree at the Australian Catholic University. Annabelle, how do you go from ordinary to extraordinary? Um, I think it's a mixture of two things that I thought of. Um, the first being having belief in myself, um, but the second being realising that I couldn't do it on my own and that I had to have a team around me. So the first was self-belief. A lot of times throughout my career, um, you know, going through good phases, you think everything's all fine. But then, you know, I got injured in 2015 and that was going to make it difficult for me to make the Rio team. And a lot of people were telling me that, you know, if you're not on the 2015 World Championship team, then you're probably not going to be seen in Rio. Um, and a lot of people told me that I wouldn't be able to get back after my injury. So kind of just believing in myself and trying to block out um, all the negative things that I could hear around me was a big thing. Um, but also I couldn't do that on myself and being able to rely on people around me and the team that I had um, of supporters, my family, people at the VIS, everyone helping me out and having my best interest, I think was really important. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Annabelle. <laughs> We're now going to hear from Stuart Tripp. So, and Stuart um, is, is, is uh, AWD Cycling. He's a two-time Paralympic and silver medalist at the Rio 2016 Games in the Men's Time Trial H5. He's also author, regular ambassador and motivational public speaker and stay-at-home father of two young boys. Welcome, Stuart. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming around this morning. Uh, just three things. The hardest thing to do in the morning is put your socks on. Once you've got them on, you're right. Um, 
Always make your bed. It's the little things in life that matter and um, making your bed is one of the most important things you can do in a day. It's also the first task you do of the day. Um, and completing task one allows you to complete task two and so forth. Uh, and the third one is life. Life is hard. Without a doubt, life is hard. Um, you can experience the pain of success or you can experience the pain of failure. And that's your choice. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Stuart. Okay. Maddie Hogan is our ne next athlete on the list, and she is in the AWD Javelin. A three-time Paralympian and dual silver medalist in the F46 Javelin at both the 2008 and 2012 Beijing and London Games. She's also World Paralympic Champion at the 2011 IPC Athletics Championships. She has completed an exercise and sports science degree at university and is currently an account manager at Blue Scope Steel. Welcome, Maddie. Thank you, sir. So, ordinary to extraordinary. Ordinary What's your, to extraordinary. Sorry, what? I thought you were going to ask a question. No, 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 no. Sweet, over to right. you, over to you. Okay, <laughs> over to me. I have the floor. Good morning. Um, ordinary to extraordinary. I guess um, being asked this question, the first thing that popped to mind was um, similar to Millie's fear of failure was mine was fear of regret. So uh, late in 2015, I had just finished reconstructing or rehabbing a, a, my left ACL reconstruction. Um, and six days before World Championships, I popped my right one. And we were about nine months out of Rio. I know, you're feeling the pain. Who's feeling the pain? <laughs> I felt it a little. Um, so we were about nine months out from Rio and I think um, I probably, the first thought that popped to mind was we didn't have enough time to, to rehab it to qualify. So um, fear of regret and I, we, we reconstructed the knee a little, diff a little differently um, which would hopefully fast track rehab and, and I uh, managed to qualify for the games and it was, um, I didn't, fear so much re-rupturing, but it was just the thought of, of, of giving it a go and, and not wanting to, you know, be sitting there in 10 years' time wishing I'd, wishing I'd um, made the bet or, or given it a go. So, yeah. Well done. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thanks, you. My pleasure. I'm now proud to introduce uh, Catherine Skinner, who is in shooting. And... Um, Catherine is an Olympic champion in the trap shooting at the 2016 Rio Games. I think you are our first gold medalist at Rio. Is that correct? Uh, from what I understand, I was the third. I oh, the, the swimmers third. got ahead. Oh, the me. swimmers got ahead. Well, there you go. Okay, okay. all right. Okay. A three-time gold, silver and bronze medalist at the World University Championships in 2013, 11 and 2015, respectively. Catherine has also completed an honours in chemical engineering, and I'm glad to say she's also one of our graduates from the Barrett Business Scholarship Program at the VIS. Welcome, Catherine. What are your secrets from going to ordinary to extraordinary? Well, I think it's being stubborn. Um, now everyone else frames it as being determined, but it's really choosing your path and sticking to it. Uh, because now, with doing my university degree at the same time as competing, I ended up taking seven years to do a four-year course and I, I was frequently asked, like, why are you trying to do both you know, things at once? Focus on one and your degree is going to have a longer term benefit. But it was a bit of you know, what Maddie said of fear of regret, but also I chose to do both and that was what I was going to do. So I stuck at it. And you know, within 12 months of you know, graduating, I had, you know, I had my degree and I also had a gold medal. And now no one's asking questions. <laughs> well done, Catherine. Fantastic. <laughs> now, I will get this right now because uh, Alec Potts beside me and his two colleagues were the first medal that we won at Rio. Um, Alex is in archery, uh, a bronze medalist at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games and world junior record holder in archery. He is also the founder and manager of his own business enterprise, Eliza Archery, and he too is also a graduate of the Barrett Business Scholarship Program at the VIS. Welcome, Alec. Thank you. Um, I think for me, it was probably the recognition that performance um, as an athlete and in running a business doesn't start from day one, day two, day three, day four and build on this nice kind of upwards trend. There's peaks and you have your troughs. 
And every time we, I know for myself, when I go to a competition and I hit a peak and I do really well, that's great. But then you celebrate and you forget about it and you go out the next day. Every time we have a trough and we don't do as well as we're hoping, we sit there and we analyse it and we think about it. And every time you have that trough, you get that opportunity to analyse yourself and grow from those mistakes for next time. So I think it's really important to remember that the road to success doesn't look like that. Kind of curves and goes up and down and up and down. But every time you go down, that peak gets a little bit higher because you take those lessons you've learnt and give them, uh, take them into the next opportunity for success. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Alec. <laughs> Our next athlete is Kate Doherty, AWD Triathlon. I'm sorry, beg your pardon. So next will be Kate Maloney, who is not at the Olympics, but if you love netball, you'll love Kate. Um, the 2017 Vixens captain and mid-court star, she debuted with the VIS-based team in 2013. Kate is currently completing a Bachelor of Degree in Exercise and Health Science at the Australian Catholic University. Kate, what are your secrets from going from ordinary to extraordinary? Thank you, and hopefully we can have netball at the Olympics one day. But um, I think for me it all came down to mindset, and mindset's a massive theme at the Melbourne Vixens, and I suppose a thing for me... Uh, which really did help change my performances out on court. But I sort of changed the way I perceived what I was doing, changed the way I perceived what was happening on the court and really took the pressure off myself. I went back to remembering why we started. I started playing netball as a little kid. It was fun. I enjoyed it. And um, by taking that, that pressure off um, and really just being in the present moment, I really did see my performances change. And I think that was a really big aspect for me. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, we now have uh, Jason Lees, and he's AWD and WCH uh, at wheelchair rugby, a dual Paralympic wheelchair rugby champion at the 2012 and 2016 Games. You don't want to mess with them, I can tell you. They are tough guys. Um, Jason is a silver and gold medalist at the 2010 and 2014 Wheelchair Rugby Championships as well. He is currently working with Disability Support Australia. Jason, what's your advice? Yeah, hi. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. I think um, what you'll hear from most athletes is um, goes without saying the hard work, um, determination, everything like that. But one of the big things um, within our team and what, what I think sets our team apart from a lot of the others is we put a big emphasis on um, having fun and enjoying each other's company. And, um, and having that between us um, makes us want to go that extra yard so we don't let each other down. Um, and I, I think that sort of made a big difference for us um, and it's sort of showed in our results. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alongside him is Matt Lewis, who's also a team member of the AWD Wheelchair Rugby Team, 2016 Rio Paralympic Champion with Wheelchair Rugby. Matt is also completing a Certificate for in Accounting with Holmes Glen Institute of TAFE. He works as a bookkeeper in his spare time and assists with the education of young people in the dangers of risk-taking. Matt, what advice have you got for us in terms of going from ordinary to extraordinary? Yeah, so how I end up in the chair was through poor life choices, um, but how I ended up here is pretty much through taking an opportunity. And so through that opportunity, um, it led to more and I find, I've found that some of the biggest opportunities in my life have come through some of the smallest means and just kind of taking it when it's there and feeling like it can still fit into my life um, and something I enjoy. So yeah, I was uh, given the opportunity to you know, play wheelchair rugby and so I just started there and then the next thing I realised it was a Paralympic sport, I'm like, you know, I'm a bit of an eccentric, so I like to take things as far as I can go. So, um, yeah, so I've just tried to stick at it and uh, not want to give up on myself to achieve that. So, Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. <laughs> and finally, another AWD wheelchair rugby teammate and gold medalist, Andrew Harrison. Uh, he's a dual uh, Paralympic wheelchair rugby champion at the 2012 and 2016 Games, a silver medalist at the 2010 World Championships, and he's currently looking to obtain his pilot's licence. So, Andrew, what have you got for us this morning? 
Uh, yeah, thank you and thanks for everyone for coming. Uh, it's not actually a pilot's license to fly a plane or anything. Um, it's actually to do with uh, transport. Um, but I think today my ordinary and extraordinary thing happened. Um, I completely forgot what I was going to say when I got up here, which was pretty ordinary. Um, <laughs> so to actually be up here and giving you this is pretty extraordinary. Um, <laughs> but basically, it's kind of simple. Us three here, we've all had an accident. And, you know, a lot of Paralympians have had accidents. And just to be able to get back and compete in sport, either with a team or individually, is extraordinary. Um, you know, we've had to overcome a lot of barriers. And, you know, to get out there and compete against other people around the world and get to see different places around the world is, is amazing. Fantastic. Well, I think you did pretty well, considering. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm glad to say that we're actually going well for time. So does anyone in the audience have any questions for our amazing people up here? Anyone got any questions you'd like to ask them? Doesn't matter if you don't, but if you do, please do so now. You're all in awe, aren't you, really? This is what's happening. I know, I know. Okay, look, we've had a jam-packed morning and uh, I would like to give uh, a well-deserved round of applause to every single person up here. They make our lives better, even if we're sitting on the couch watching them perform extraordinary feats, but they also make our lives better because they're fantastic role models for all of us, our children, our friends, our family, to be able to actually get inspiration from and know that each day we get up, we get going and we can actually make our lives and those around us better if we give it a go. So thank them all very much for me. Thank you very much. So with that, um, I would like to close proceedings. As I mentioned earlier before, I think the words discernment and equanimity will travel very well and lightly with you. Please use them each day, each moment that you can. And it is our privilege to help you in some small way go from ordinary to extraordinary. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.